We're gonna do a really quick build review of the Arikali's Fang Guardian uh, for 3.22 and just talk about where it's at, where it's gonna go in the future most likely for 3.23 and just the overall state of Arikali's Fang. Also, I do a lot of minion build guides. I do a lot of walking simulator guides. So if you like that kind of content, I already have a, a couple videos queued up for 3.23 for that content, assuming that the, there's no giant mechanic changes for the next league. So if you wanna see that uh, at the next league, just go ahead and drop a follow. Um, it's going to be worth your while. So anyways, uh, I generally like to build these kind of uh, builds budget wise, um, five, six divines most, mo mainly because I feel like to me, I don't have to uh, worry about a high investment or resell a gear and I can you know, save some of that money, go play other builds. And generally, if I'm going to build a, a build guide, I don't feel like it's a genuine to like say it's a hundred divine build. Most of those people that have a hundred divines, they're not watching guides. They're probably making their own. So uh, from from my perspective, I'd rather just keep it cheap and keep it pretty simple and straightforward uh, So that people who don't have a lot of time or a lot of energy put into this they can they can do that So uh, with that being said, uh, I really really enjoyed Guardian for our Ar Arakali's Fang probably the most of any variant I've played I played I don't know four four different leagues. I played Arakali's Fang I normally play a minion build every league in some way just because I just like the mechanics uh, and Arakali's Fang Guardian has felt better than anything else I've ever played from minions, just in general. And I've played pretty much all of it. So when when I say better, it feels better. It doesn't have the most damage I've ever played for Arakali's Fang, but it definitely has like just tremendous amounts of survivability and like automation and like the uptime and the functionality of this build feels smoother than I've felt with Arakali's Fang and other builds. Um, for like say occultist or old guardians or even a champion build you could pretty much build our Kali's fang in any in any character mainly because our Kali's fang just needs cluster gems with a minion damage on them so like you could just i mean you can go do a pathfinder if you want for our Kali's fang and it would be just fine because you would just go get two or three cluster gems uh you know 12 you know 12 passive clusters and you'd be able to build it just fine so i you know i don't really feel like it's it's in, entirely important to, to have to do a minion build or a guardian build, uh, sorry, a necromancer or an occultist build or a guardian build for Arikali's Fang, but definitely is cheaper, I'll put it that way. So let's just uh, let's just jump into it really quick. I, I wanna go over the gear really, um, really fast because I've already done build guides on this, but I feel like it's worth mentioning. The three major pieces of this build are Arikali's Fang, Ancient Skull, and Aegis Aurora those are the main mechanics of this build everything else is built around those mechanics so first off uh aegis roar which is survivability if you don't know what this is you can definitely look it up there's tons of great guides i've gone over it in previous guides already but basically if you take a hit um and you're trying to block 75 percent of both spell and attack hits take a hit you're gonna regen around 1500 to 2000 es and each time you take a hit, so whenever someone hits you, it's actually more of a healing ex experience than it is a damaging experience, which means that like any incoming damage that kills you normally has to be a degen or a one shot. So um, assuming that we're not getting one shot because I mean, there's not a lot you can do to defend against that. Uh, the the biggest issue now is degen. So I've gone and solved a lot of degens. I've uh, solved bleed, corrupted blood, ignite, and poison um in some roundabout ways like uh, i have avoidance instead of immunity avoidance means that like if a map mod comes up and says you have 40 percent more chance to to take poison technically that would override this and i have like three percent chance to take a poison damage or if i had a you know an ignite or whatever ignite from um uh, purity of elements it, i'm just immune to it now but say for bleed you could definitely take a chance to bleed you know and, and go okay well i have 50 percent more chance to bleed so i'm gonna take bleed damage now but in general you're bleed immune just read it as bleed immune until until otherwise it's just a map mod that you have to worry about at this point in time um so there's a lot of degen mitigation here at this point in time normally it's only the degens you stand in that are going to take they're going to be major sources of damage and I, I have a couple of different pieces of automation i'll talk about here in a second so um Aegis works really great with the 40,000 armor I have. I think I get this up to 77 when all the buttons are pressed. Um, you can get up to 100 if you invest a little bit more than I did into armor, but I didn't really feel like I was getting, cause like 100, 100K armor would mean you get 2000 flat ES regen 
every time someone hit you. Right now I have 3,500, 3,400 shield, ES shield. So I'm probably regening pretty much like half of my uh, my bar, maybe a little bit less than half of my bar every time I get hit. I don't really feel like it's, I'm getting hit enough to where I don't really worry about having to regen my whole bar every time I get hit. So those are the mechanics um, for the for Aegis Aurora and for the defenses. For Arcali's Fang, I'm doing melee fizz, I'm doing multi-strike, and I'm doing minion damage, all quality 20, because you get an extra 10% damage off of each one of those at quality 20. Those, you don't have to do those up front, the qualities can be done later. Um, and then Ancient Skull, um, I, I cycled out my specters um, because they were just becoming too much of an issue with the damage bonus that Ancient Skull gave. Uh, Frenzy charges give a lot, of, like a lot of damage, a lot of usability, but overall, Ancient Skull gives more damage and more usability. And this last line, minions can hear the whispers for five seconds after they deal critical strike. Even if I could prevent, and I did in the past, prevent uh, the specters from critting, they were just dying to degens or just general AOE damage from minion from mobs. So it, it was just it. I just had to pull those out. So the specters aren't in the build anymore. And that really makes Ancient Skull a lot easier to deal with. So anyways, um, that being said, the rest of the gear um, in the current state, I've upgraded the chest, I think, a little bit. Um, I've, you know, I think the rings and the amulet are all the same. They're pretty garbage. You could do like, I think these are the things I just picked up. Um, boots and gloves, they're all pretty much the same. I did replace the belt mainly so I can get the poison and bleed immune. Cause here I get, if you look at the, um, the top mods, I get a 35% chance to avoid bleed here. And then I get, again, I get poison, uh, immunity here or poison avoidance here. I get poison and bleed here. So at the end of this, I just have more uh, avoidance because of the um, uh, Darkness and Throne mod, 83% increased effect of socket, socketed abyssal jewels. So this is really great for like upgrading your gem. So if you get like, if you get some really banger, um, you know, eye jewels, you can definitely just upgrade the quality of the eye jewels by getting a better Darkness and Throne because it can go up to 100%. So those are the big mechanics that I have for defenses. Uh, damage is pretty much just obviously the, the fang and the tree. I don't really have much more damage other than the helm. So um, yeah, and then the block, I actually sacrificed a little bit of the block because um, I just didn't feel like I needed every bit of it. I only sacrificed maybe, here let me just see. Um, yeah, 75 and 68. So a little bit of spell block. I'll regain that later if I get more levels. The other thing is I left this at level 91 because I didn't want to, it's hard to say like a level 100 build guide whenever people just don't have the time to invest in it or the money to invest in it. Cause you can get, you can get a level 100 build guide off of buying five ways if you have 30, 40 divine to spend just on levels of that character. So like you can, you can, if you know how to make money, you can get a level 100 build really easy that you don't really have to play the time for. It's just not easy to like, explain that whole process because you pretty much have to know how to do that as a separate event other than just playing a character so um let's just jump into the the passive tree so i guess let's just go to the ascendancies first the ascendancies are pretty straightforward um there's not a lot of benefit you get from unwavering faith uh at least for your your minions that you're you know your spiders because they don't take damage and um, they don't need recovery and they don't need es um, here, obviously, we're not linking to anything. Um, we don't really have any minions to link to, and this is a solo play build. Uh, so you take uh, time of need because that helps uh, mitigate uh, curses and uh, chaos degen, specifically chaos degen, because most damage doesn't get through your ES shield. Uh, Radiant Crusade. Uh, I used to think that this was a really good automation tool. And I actually made a video about it. It is still a good automation tool. It's just not as good as Divine Iron. I'll tell you why in here in a second when we go over the automations. Um, and then Bastion of Hope, which is the part that gives you the extra block for attack and spell damage, which is incredibly strong in this build. It basically, this is like the, the free button on don't die. So you really want to take this. If you're taking anything I, up front, whenever you're building this build, if you have Aegis Aurora already, I would take Bastion of Hope first. Then I probably would take um, Radiant Faith. And then I take probably Time of Need. And lastly, I take Radiant Crusade. 
because uh, Radiant Crusade is is also on top of a, a piece of automation. It does some damage, but it also does some damage mitigation because 20% um, damage from hits is taken. So taken from your Sentinel uh, Radiant. So which means that like if you take a hit and you do take the damage, that you're not blocking the damage. This is in that last 25% of that damage that you know chance that could happen. You're, you're mitigating 20% of that. So it's noticeable. So anyways, let's just let's go through the build. I took out some of the clusters over here just because I didn't feel like they're fully being utilized as well as they could be. I didn't need to get all the um, all res and spell block over here. The accuracy here wasn't really needed and attack speed wasn't really needed in comparison to what I had. I could take one point here and I could pull three points out here. So I just took the flat minion accuracy and then also with the minion accuracy on this jewel i have some flat that's multiplied by the abyssal socket um, mod on the darkness enthroned i get enough um, accuracy so that my spiders have 100 percent ch hit chance one of the things you need to realize about spiders is that just because they don't take damage doesn't mean that they can't miss so um, i think that's an easy miss for like people to like look at this build as um, these haven't really changed much um, i went over here and took more es out of this because I actually lost some life here and I and I took some spell block here too so I in general I feel like just stacking more ES on this build is more useful because I'm very rarely taking life damage if I'm taking life damage I'm pretty much already dead like the chaos degens aren't really affecting me anymore it's normally just a one shot that kills me so it's I I, I feel like having a, a larger ES pool to work with for my um, Aegis Roar to affect on is probably better so, um, cause I can't automatic regen life off of Aegis Roar, it's only ES. Um, so I moved my mana reservation up here from here. I actually took away the curse uh, cluster and then this mana cluster. I don't get as much duration out of my um, molten shell now, but the way that I use molten shell is not on a button press anymore. So it's, it's fine, it's fine. Um, and the only thing I really, really lost out of re removing all these skills is the second line you take 40 percent reduced extra critical damage from cursed enemies so technically if you go look at my um my stats i only have um 60 reduced extra crit but i do have um i'm immune from shock so i feel like that kind of balanced it out so i take 60 percent extra damage from crits reduced from like say elemental and physical uh, and chaos, but I also don't take any electrical um, crits too. So like, technically it's only fire and cold. So I feel like that's worth it. Um, I feel like also I forgot to mention this before. I'd probably take probably work on stun avoidance here or stun mutant immunity more. So um, I think I also removed this point. I just didn't need it because I wasn't my minions weren't taking damage anymore because i didn't need min minion re regeneration because i don't have any specters anymore and one percent life regen for me was just not worth it um again since they don't have life it's not worth it i at one point in time i tested minion recovery re minions recover five percent of life on minion death the last line here and that was useful on recovering um the specter's life whenever say spiders died or despawned they count as a death when they despawn so technically every time a spider so 20 spiders despawn five times it means it's 100 percent going to heal all all of your other uh, minions but my automation got so good for the spiders that i stopped getting like a lot of regen on them and they kept on dying so i just ended up taking out the specters altogether um mainly because the um the damage here was just it was better to take the damage here than to take the specters and most of it was degen from either the ancient skull or just aoe damage from um from pack mobs so this is the cluster these are just really garbage clusters i just self-rolled i didn't buy any of these um the only really big thing to note is i took two efficiency clusters these these can be bought for like 10 20 c if you just buy a whatever cluster and then you self-roll it and um, I only cared about the malevolence and uh, determination reservation. I also got um, discipline for free with my uh, amulet, all's amulet. So I have a lot of aura reservation efficiency off that because I don't, I just, 
I just don't have a lot of reservation needs. Um, yeah, I mean, this is pretty straightforward. You can look at this and pause it if you want. Um, but the big thing here is that I'm about 3.5 million DPS. Um, that was up from the previous version of this build, mainly because I took two sets of clusters and the damage mitigation nodes that I was taking, I was just, I already had too much damage mitigation. I didn't need it. So anyways, um, that's the, the tree. Let me just show you the build really quick and then we can call it a day. So the, the skills that I'm using, and I'll just show you this really quick. I'm using Arcanus Brand, Feeding Frenzy, Karen Golem, and Despair as a damage bonus. So I will, um, I'll, I'll current its brand, Arcanus brand, and it will cast these other spells uh, every once in a while. And that bo boosts my damage by like 700k, something like that, 600k. So it's a noticeable amount of damage. Like I only really do this if I feel like I'm missing damage. And then over here we get uh, Desecrate, Molten Shell, Channel, and then Divine Ire. So whenever I some of my spiders here in a second, you'll see that I desecrate molten shell and channel um, divine iris so that whenever I pop my worm jar, the minions or the, you know, the enemy worms will just die immediately and spawn my uh, spiders. That's also, I do the, the molten shell here so that I have a higher chance of not dying whenever I'm standing still and I can do this. Like I walk away from a, a pack of uh, mobs and you know, I'll do this over the side if I need to regen my spiders and I just don't want to get one shot in that process. Um, the biggest change in this build, I feel like for usability and like automation is castle damage taken and des desecrate. Um, I feel like this keeps enough like packs up and also that I'm not like um, flesh offering all the, the corpses away, uh, flesh offering. Like I feel like with the desecrate, purity flames and flesh offering just kind of randomly going off every once in a while. Like I feel like the automation is better. And I use purity flames mainly because um, it gives me um, consecrate ground which helps me deal with uh, degens so anyways i started at 10 very soon i'll have um, more than that yeah so there we go so 12 uh 20 great and then you'll see up here i will i'll drop the arcane's brand and it will well whenever it goes off you'll see that it, it spawns a golem he will spawn feeding frenzy and he'll pretty much die almost immediately and that's all i need is him for feeding frenzy i don't really care about his flat fizz that he gives everything uh, normally it's just more uh the the feeding frenzy that counts Something I haven't mentioned specifically in this build guide because it's more a um, mechanics. Uh, I really like one big uh, hit for these um, these these packs because mainly because I I don't have to stand in them. I'll just stand at the side of them, and I can just let them them go through the process of like killing the the mobs. That's totally fine. Like you can see, like it's kind of hurting here. I probably shouldn't have done that one completely, but it's possible. It's fine. And what I'll do is I'll stand at the edge, let them clear out the the, the pack, and then I don't have to worry about where I'm placing the stuff because I could just no brain, you know, look at where I'm placing it. I think I probably hit maybe a fizz or a poison prevention. Maybe I don't know because it, it's taken a while for them to die. But again, we'll just let them. Let the spiders do their work. All right, and that's the end of that. Let's just pick the first one.
there you go for stuff like that you just i mean honestly just sidestep it you don't really have to feel like you're doing a ton of like interaction with this stuff because your spiders will just do it all for you so anyways uh i hope you all enjoyed this build uh review uh this will be pretty viable for a 3.23 and uh, I don't really think that there's much else to say other than uh, it's pretty cheap, it's pretty fun, it's gonna be able to pro progress through all the content. Like seriously, like, you can do any content with this because you just can avoid a lot of bricking mechanics on maps. So so yeah, it, it's, very, it's very content viable. So I hope you all have a great day.